So let's, let's take a section over here and talk about the, uh, about the math part. So let's start off with the, with the notation. When we created its periodic extension, instead of what we had originally, which is, which was x of zero, x of one, x of two. And that was the entire sequence we began here. What I want you to think of is this waveform. So all I've done here is I've, is I've shown in a, in a sequence form, I'm bridging intuition with math, is I've shown what I did down in the lower left and when I made its, peri when I made its periodic um, continuation, I'm now showing it using sequence form. Thumbs up there? Okay, so I can rewrite this using a new notation. Instead of, instead of writing x of minus n, instead of writing x of minus one, x of minus two, I'm now gonna write x of minus n, just in brackets, and I'm gonna modulo it with my capital N operator. And that lets me move from this way, the top way of writing it, which would require me to write a double-sided waveform to the lower way of writing it, from which now I can <laughs> map it back to here. So let's talk about, about what that, that modulo operator means. It's uh, where n, little n, modulo capital N is said, n modulo capital N, and it means little n plus or minus as many big n's to bring it into the range of zero to strictly less than capital N, just like we defined our original length down here. So just as a quick, Example to make sure everyone gets it. Um, three modulo six. We want to bring the three into the range of zero to five. And it's already in that range, so that's just simply three. That's easy. How about um, 12 modulo six? Noah, what would that be? How do we bring 12 into the range of zero to five? Um, can we only use like addition and subtraction? Only, you can only add or subtract multiples of your modulo, so six. So you, yeah, you subtract six. So you subtract six to get six, but that's still not in the range of strictly less than six, right? That's yeah. equal to six. So you got to... Twice. Subtract again, and now you get zero, and now it's in the range of zero to five, so that's good. Try, try another one, uh, Kevin. 11 modulo six. What is that equal to? So you just subtracted once, and that'll uh -huh. be five. Yeah. That's it, and that gives you five. So How about, is that not the same thing as um, the remainder if you're dividing it? Well, the problem come, it's similar, but it's not exactly the same because it, it's different when we start to talk about negative numbers and we'll hit that next. But whoever just asked me that question, who was that? Okay, Jeremiah, so what's zero modulo six? Is that not just zero? 
it's just zero. In fact, zero modulo anything is going to be zero except zero modulo zero where it switches not defined. Um, okay, but now we've got this negative one modulo six. And this is where it, it differs from the remainder operation. So what is what would you say this is, Nick? Uh, does negative one not work? Negative one doesn't work because remember, it, it's got to be in that range of zero to strictly less than your modulo operator. So we need so to somehow get five. it between zero and five. And so you add add six add and you get six five. and be five. That's it. You got it. Okay. So now you can see how this modulo operator works down here and how it's really doing this exact operator. Um, it's pulling things around. Let me give, let me give an example using the math. Find the um, periodic, periodic conjugate symmetric part. of this sequence. So we'd write down our formula from, from this thing, X periodic conjugate symmetric is equal to one half of our original waveform plus our modulo, or negative n modulo capital N. And so I want you to think, I should write that in a different, in a different color. I want you to, to think, you've got a signal that looks like zero, j, two, zero, j, two, where, we're, where this is the zero mark and so let's let's plug in these let's plug in these values our sequence is zero j two plus so i'm going to use some some scratch pad down here the first one we want to do is at n equals zero, right? We want to find out what is the conjugate of zero. Maybe, maybe I'll just write that down to be to make it perfectly clear. We are going to want to write down this sequence. We have our x of minus zero modulo. What's our modulo for this problem? Anyone? Two. Ah, no. Three. Three. There so we go. we're going to modulo by its length. So it's length three plus x of minus one modulo three plus x of negative two modulo three. All right, and we gotta, this is our transform sequence. So now let's simplify this so we can just see what, what is negative zero modulo, modulo three? Well, negative zero modulo three. Um, would that still be zero? That's always going to be zero. Zero modulo anything will be zero. So what's negative three modulo? What's negative one modulo three, Alex? Um, I think I had. I don't know. Too much swiping on uh, TikTok. So I'm, this, I'm writing notes, sir. Not my phone. No, I know, I know, I know, I know. So this is. Um, so we. So Alex, I'm going to talk you through it. We got this, what I'm asking you to find is, simplify this, negative one modulo three. 
So you're going to, you want to somehow change this negative one into a number that's between, that's either zero, one, or two. It always starts off, you can start off with zero and it can end up to one less than the, than the modulo. And you're going to do that by adding or subtracting multiples of three until this negative one is in that range of zero, one, or two. So what does it become? Uh, so you would just add three, one, so it'd be two. That's it. So this is a complicated way of saying what is x of two. And uh, Jeremiah, you want to tell me what this index is going to be? What is negative two modulo three? I'm sorry, I answered, but my mic was muted. Is it, it going to be one? Yeah. Okay, so now that we've got this, we can write down, now we can write it down nicely. One half, we've got our first sequence, which is zero, J, two, which begins at zero. And we've got our second sequence, which is, let's see, it's X of zero, which we said is zero. And now it's X of two, which is two. And then this is X of one, which is J. Oh, and that's almost right, except for the fact that I forgot the conjugate portion, right? So we got to take the conjugate of this and the conjugate of this and the conjugate of this, and that makes it negative J. And now we've got the periodic conjugate symmetric portion of this, and we can, and now it's just math. So it's going to be uh, the average of zero and zero, which this time I can figure out to be zero. The average of j plus two, so that would be j plus two over two, and then this will also, this will be uh, two minus j over two. And so that's the periodic conjugate symmetric portion of this. Let's just see actually if it, if it is, as advertised, periodic conjugate symmetric. If we were to duplicate this over and over, we would get zero, Let's see, this gives us one plus j over two, and this is one minus j over two. Firstly, we, oh yeah, all right, let's, let's continue it on. Zero, one plus j over two, one minus j over two. This is our zero point, so we're gonna continue it on. Zero, one plus j over two, one minus j over two. And it continues on both sides. Let's match them up. Is this conjugate symmetric? The real part is even, the imaginary part of is odd, it is. Is this periodic conjugate symmetric? Is this conjugate symmetric, not periodic con conjugate symmetric? Is it conjugate symmetric? The real part is even and the imaginary part is odd. The real part is even, the imaginary part is not there, so it's, it's, it is odd. Um, because the periodic extension is conjugate symmetric, therefore it is periodic conjugate symmetric and we've done it. And if we had done this exact same work to find the periodic conjugate anti-symmetric portion, when you added this to the periodic conjugate, whoops, my hand is out racing my brain today, the periodic conjugate anti-symmetric portion, then you would end up with your original waveform. That was a lot of stuff. Thumbs up on that. Cool. Kevin, I wasn't sure if I, I got a thumbs up from you. Okay, I kind of blanked out there. So I kind of like, so I saw I missed the, what we did right there. Like I, I literally just blanked out. <laughs> That's okay. T yeah. Tell me which part you, firstly, so, I'm going so, to record this and, and post okay, it. Okay, so I'll just, I'll just look at it later then. But if you blanked out, I can <laughs> bet that you're probably not the only one. So, so tell me what you're, where you took it, where you were up to. Okay, so you're just explaining um, the conjugate? conjugate. Yes. Okay, and then, so. Did you, did you get up to this? I got, yeah, I got, up, I got up to there and then. Oh, well then it's easy. Then, yeah, and then you explained the bottom part, and I just 
I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it's easy. Right. All that I'm doing is I'm reiterating the fact that, that what's the big deal about finding the periodic conjugate symmetric part? It's because not only is it conjugate periodic symmetric, which I proved down here that it's conjugate periodic symmetric, oh, okay. because right. it's, con it's, it's um, periodic extension is conjugate symmetric. And since it's okay. periodic extension is conjugate, since it's periodic extension, is conjugate symmetric. Therefore, its finite length version is periodic conjugate symmetric. Okay. And okay, then the okay. very last part is I said, okay, now that we found the periodic conjugate portion of our original signal, mm -hmm. if we were to do the same process again to find the periodic conjugate anti-symmetric portion, which mm -hmm. is almost the same, all we're gonna do is replace this plus with a minus. Okay. Then, you add these two together and you'll, we'll recover our original signal. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you. You bet.